I'm sitting here with Clive Bowen and Shabir on the 23rd of August and we're having a cup of tea in a studio. Which studio is it? It's the, it's the throwing room, the, the throwing main room, room for yeah. making pots. Yeah, so we're surrounded by pots that might be fired fairly soon for your show in December. And I was just thinking uh, yesterday as I'm looking at commemorative plates that you've been here for 51 years. And has it changed, or has what what what's changed apart from getting older? What's <laughs> what's what's how's how's life evolved in those fifty one years, Clive? Um, I think the the pots have evolved very slowly over those years. When I look at pots I made fifty years ago, that I think they're pretty horrible. <laughs> Not you know whenever I see them, they're obviously. Hopefully not as good as the ones I've been making in the last ten years or so. Yeah. Um, well, we were well. We're surrounded by your books, which reference that have got all your recipes, the weights, the sizes, and so on. And then Rosie and I were at the Burton Museum yesterday, and they've got this lovely little display of pots. And then I've been upstairs in what I call your museum. I mean, some things change and some things don't, but we can't get away from you here in, in, in Devon because th there you are in the Burton Museum as well. I mean, it's, I think there's something really um, comforting about mm. the fact that I know exactly what a Clive Bowen pot looks like, but within that there's always, you know, like when I have dinner and, and it's like, oh, I really like that black plate with the three green, green lines. I mean, it does always keep changing. Yeah, it keeps changing, but very slowly, I think. It's not an instant change. Um, it's quite exciting, really, finding new decorations and new ways of doing things, even at my old age. Yeah, and of course so, your commissions keep pushing you on as well. Yeah, Cause, yeah. Because uh, you had one through... The Scottish Gallery. <laughs> oh, yes, that was um, a very nice commission of yeah. a dinner service. I think it's the biggest one I've ever tackled, really. 20 yeah. pieces of each design. Each design, yeah. And then each one had its own design. Individual rim. Yeah. Mm. So you've got, and I've taken a photograph of that because you've, you've, you've got it on the, on the, on the wall. Yes, some of the... Diagrams and pictures on the wall of obviously over fifty years have been eaten by the snails. <laughs> yeah, and we're just enjoying, we're just enjoying the cows here. They're they're having their elevenses as well. You're going to do a big firing, wood 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 firing. Yeah. And you're hoping to put three hundred and fifty pots in there, which is at only, least. Yeah, because that's only third capacity, isn't it? Yeah, probably hopefully six. Hundred pots, maybe I'll try and achieve in the next week or two. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's quite a a large kiln to fill up. But you know, when I was younger, it was much easier. I think because I used to work harder. I think. Well, you can you can slow down. You're 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 seventy nine. I've just done a huge shopping list of. I, and, th and only because I was going around looking at all the various shapes and then of course I'm always looking for something that we've maybe not had before um, because you don't want to take anything for, for granted and it was uh, so what are you what, what do you enjoy most in, in your work or is there what is the aspect of your work that gives you the most satisfaction I th I think probably the the actual making on the wheel, followed closely by the decorating. And then thirdly, the firing is just, you know, what you have to do, really, to yeah. get the results. And you've got... Describe your palette, because uh, I know it, but maybe we should just describe it, even though we're, we're talking about it. <clears throat> Basically, the I have three... No, four slips, liquid clay, that I use. That's a, a black, which will give a black. 
a creamy white, a green and an ochre colour. And I just use those colours ever since I started really. Just local clay mixed with water. Um, yes, I think probably looking back at the the limited palette that I use has probably given me my strength because I haven't been wanting to do blue or wanting to do other things, other colours. Yeah, it's so. it's it's satisfying within that. And then of course there's huge pots and then you're you're in this kind of um what some would might consider to be the sort of potter's paradise which is Devon itself. Um and you know, it harks back to hundreds of years of uh, tradition. Do you like carrot you, you must obviously obviously enjoy carrying forward that that tradition yeah so i uh, i do think about that sometimes i suppose the north devon tradition i'm just basically using the same materials that that they've always used you know local clay local firing with wood um, but they are english they are english shapes you know the storage jar the medieval jug the baluster vase, the baluster baluster jug, um, and and then um and and this and the slip and obviously. Not obviously, it's not obvious if you don't know, but you're one of the very few English artists that's accepted in Japan, and then as I've been going around your museum, you, you it all trips off your tongue, every <laughs> single Japanese artist that you've worked with or who've been yes. there or you've been there, I mean it's such a, that that. That East West tradition is is fascinating for for me. It's it's obviously natural to you. Mm. No, it's one of the re rewarding things about the style of work I make is that yeah. they love slipwear in Japan. So it's I think we've been there nine times now, nine exhibitions, and uh, obviously I get many ideas from Japan that I can steal or adapt so it's, I think travel has been quite rewarding you know for ideas so um, even though they're based on English traditions I'm very happy to look at other cultures and think hey that's a nice idea I might incorporate that into my decorating yeah and the other thing of course is you're married to Rosie She's a great cook. I'm not saying that you're not a great cook because I've had some great porridge this morning. <laughs> Live. We were just talking about, can we do the same with muesli? Um, and I don't know if we can, but Clive might try. Um, and so because you entertain here, because there isn't restaurants and so on nearby, I, I know that Rosie has, has kind of asked you for things for the kitchen and they have to work. You know, and it's very, very unpretentious. We we sit there in the kitchen and well, I try and help clear up, um. But it's a real pleasure using the things that that you that you've made to to make a meal, a sort of more enjoyable. Mm. Well, the other day we had a a customer that recently got a big salad bowl, and they've been using it, in amongst all their other industrial pots, and they came back because. The salad bowl has given them an extra dimension to their food on the table. So it's quite rewarding, really, when people appreciate things to eat from and yeah. serve from. Thanks. It is. Makes it a pleasure to to eat. Yeah, because I'm not a cook, but even Heinz tomato soup looks amazing in a pasta dish, <laughs> pasta bowl. And I know you probably don't want to make those, but they are... Um, my my mother in law uses the pasta dish, for her breakfast, for bowl of soup, for pasta, for for a meal, and it's just the right size. You're not a glutton, with with that, and it makes it makes her really happy, and it makes me happy when I make something as banal as put a, put a tin of soup and into a Clyde Bowen bowl, and it just I just think I've made something look, it's enhanced. It makes me happy. Mm. Yeah, um, yeah. There's a strong connection with food, because Rosie's such a great cook. Uh, 
as well as lots of other friends are cooks and it's well, it's quite rewarding going to other people's houses too not just looking at my pots but you know whenever a table is laid with you know wonderful pieces whether they're industrial or wedgwood or anything it makes a whole difference to your to your day really it does i hate the idea of a plastic cup of coffee <laughs> walking around the street sort of thing i know we were just talking about the, yeah. eco- the economics of coffee making today and i just started thinking about all those plantations anyway it's it's very humbling it's it's delightful to be here because i haven't been here since february uh 2020 and it's lovely to have you coming back to to the gallery for december december this year yeah it's always a great pleasure to come to the scottish gallery i know and you're going to come up in the camper van aren't you yeah it's very i mean when we first came up for an early exhibition i felt oh i'd like to live here (laughs) such a great place in scotland Mm. yeah Rosie says it's far, far away, um, and it is different. So, because th- you're saying that this is bad weather, but I, I really like this. This is really, this is really warm for me yeah. at, at the moment. Anyway, it's a pleasure to just be photographing and and noting everything in the studio. I don't like to take it for granted, um, and we'll have fun setting up your exhibition. Yeah, later. And I, year. I also look forward to going to the, the museum, to see a couple of. Amazing paintings, the favourites of mine in the museum. Edinburgh's great for yeah. them. Our galleries are great. They're such a nice size. Mm. They're not too vast. It will be dark when you come up. Okay. We'll only have a few hours of flight. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much uh, for a very short podcast.